reading the gospel lesson for us this morning. A little bit different sermon today, just because of my inability to do a lot of reading or any um, and uh, computer time. But there's some interesting things about the prodigal son. In our Bibles, um, there are headings above the scriptures that kind of lead us into what we're about to read. And those headings tend to lead us into our perception of what we're going to read. They kind of frame what we're going to read and, and maybe lead us into that. And so the title in several different versions of the Bible are just a little bit different for the prodigal son. It's most known as the parable of the prodigal son or the parable of the lost son or the lost sons, plural, because of the two boys. But it's also known as a parable of the welcoming father or the waiting father or the compassionate father. So with that title, we're looking at what the father is doing in the passage as opposed to what the sons are doing. So it leads us a little bit differently uh, into that. It shapes what we hear a little bit differently. There's one from the New Life version that I found uh, the other day, and the title is this, A Picture Story of the Foolish Son Who Spent All His Money. Well, why read the story, right? That's pretty much told you what you're supposed to hear and read. And so that really does shape our perspective and how we interpret text. So sometimes it's useful before we study a text is to rename it. And so if we were going to rename the prodigal son, maybe we might think of the older brother and say, this is the parable of the ticked off older brother, because that would be true too. Um, there's a fellow by the name Mark Allen Powell. I had the privilege of listening to a lecture from him back in 2012 on this very text. And he was a seminary professor, and he had uh, 12 seminarians pair up, and six read the parable to the, their partner, and then the partner needed to explain what they heard. So to retell the story back to the reader in as much detail as possible. And the interesting thing he found with that is not a single person retelling the story told the detail about the famine. And the famine's pretty important because that's what led the first son to go back home. It's a big detail, and not a single one referenced that detail. So he thought that was pretty interesting. So he got 100 people together, and he paired them up. Only 6%, 6 percent, six out of the 100, that retold the story talked about the famine. This was all people in the US. He had an opportunity to be over in Russia. And he thought, what an awesome opportunity to get their perspective on this parable. And so he had a group of 50 people there and did the same thing for them. And so the numbers were 84% of them talked about the famine, recalled the famine. So 0% or 6% in the US, 84% in Russia. What was the difference? Experience. Experience, Experience. exactly. They knew there was a three year famine during the Second World War and over a quarter of the population, almost 700,000 people died of famine. It was in them. They knew the story and that was close to them and it was their experience. So our social context plays a huge role in how we interpret scripture. The other question Mark Allen Powell asked is what is the sin in this parable? And overwhelmingly, the people in the US, us, said it's the squandering of the parents' money. In Russia, the sin for them was 
that he left his father. He left the family to be on his own. They communally live, right? So our social context plays this incredible role in how we read and how we interpret scripture. I thought that was interesting because I have never considered this importance of famine in this story. But if your family lived through it, it's going to be a lot closer. So I started thinking about what things affect me closer than maybe other people. And I think collectively in our community, especially in central Iowa, the 2008 flood. When I hear flood now, that is far more closer to my heart after mucking out over 100 homes and businesses than it ever used to be. The devastation that's in Nebraska. Those of you that raise cattle and pigs, I know that hit you closer to home than us city slickers. It devastates me to know the loss that they've had, but I know that you have raised cattle and take care of those animals, that you know firsthand what that loss affects them. So our social context plays a huge role. So I think our message this morning is that there is no right or wrong in our interpretation when we come to the text because we bring our experience to the text and we draw out what is important to us, what we know and what we've experienced. And so that's why it's so important when we come around the table in Bible studies and during sermon and messages to bring our experiences because mine are different than yours and each one of us has a different experience of how God has worked in our lives. And to be able to share that knowledge, to be able to share that, that experience is so important because there's things that we just read over and miss entirely. I just thought it was just incredible the difference in two cultures and reading the same biblical text. And then to think how the titles that got put into our Bibles, and those titles came much later after our Bible was canonized, and how that influences what we're about to read. Because when you think of the parable of the welcoming father, that's a whole lot different than the picture story of the foolish son who spent all his money. <coughs> Isn't it? it sets you up differently for those texts. So going forward, as we read our texts and we gather around Bible studies, the importance of bringing ourselves and bringing our experiences to the table to open up texts in new ways for us. That's our message for today. So I invite you into a time of silence um, to reflect on your experiences and how that God uses those experiences to bring the scripture passages to life. What in your life is an experience that touches you differently now? I gave you the example of the 2008 floods. When I hear flood now, it means something so much more close to me. What's something in your life that sparks, go, I know that, I understand that. Take a moment to 